relationship between a credentialed, trained music therapist and a participant, and the music is used to serve that participant's life needs. Music therapy is the use, clinical use of music in an evidence-based practice uh, that promotes prevention and wellness. It uses uh, an individualized plan created by uh, a music therapist. It's holistic, universal, non-invasive, and cost-effective. Music therapy is using music as a medium in order to make a relationship, a working relationship with somebody. Just the opportunity to make choices to empower people. It's using music as the primary therapeutic tool to reach a whole variety of uh, clinical goals and to meet a wide range of clinical needs. Who can benefit from music therapy? For, for anybody, if you're open and you're willing and you want to participate, I feel like music therapy can be beneficial for anyone. With at-risk youth, music can help them with self-expression and building their self-esteem. Uh, kids in hospitals, adults in hospitals, um, oncology units, uh, pre-surgery, uh, music therapy is used in neurorehabilitation. We work with psych populations, special education, geriatrics, in medical settings, in schools. It's really for anybody and everybody. We work a lot with juvenile offenders in, in prisons. For them there's a lot of uh, behavioral elements, so trying to use music to contrast the negative behavioral aspects of their life that have brought them to that place. I specifically am interested in uh, rehabilitation and substance abuse and a lot of recent studies have shown that uh, music therapy has uh, extremely positive uh, benefits especially w within uh, rehabilitation. We work with people, everyone in between the young and old, everyone from very severely involved and challenged people to people like you and me who have everyday stresses and strains on us. We do this in individuals who have a range of disabilities and illnesses. Little babies in the NICU, the new intensive care units, to older adults um, with Alzheimer's and dementia. So music therapy can really treat a whole range of individuals. What domain areas can music therapy address? Music therapy addresses social, cognitive, emotional, physical, psychological, and spiritual domain areas. What happens at the beginning of the music therapy process? Usually when someone begins music therapy, there's a period of assessment. So the music therapist is looking at what are the types of music a person responds to, what are their favorite kinds of music, what instruments do they really like. So we're starting there and we're also looking at what does this person really need to work on? What would make their life better if they could make improvements in a certain area? And also what are they really good at? What are their strengths? So what can we use to help them to, to make those changes in their life? What are some music therapy techniques? 
The one that I use most often are the neurologic music therapy protocols that were developed in Colorado State. So for example, rhythmic auditory stimulation is a way to use uh, rhythm to facilitate walking with Parkinson's patients and people who have had strokes who have disordered walking patterns. A nice, even, rhythmic tempo that's delivered musically can help them reorganize their motor movement. How can music therapy help other health professionals? Half of our music therapy groups are actually co-treats with a, with a speech pathologist. Um, and they've found that coming in and pushing into our music sessions is really helpful in their goal work. Um, a lot of what they're doing is working on creating opportunities for uh, cause and effect, working on cause and effect kind of relationships. Sometimes that's using somebody's vocalization, sometimes that's using augmentative communication like a switch. And so I think a lot of the speech therapists work really hard to create some kind of a motivating um, scenario so that a student will be requesting for recurrence, trying to communicate in a purposeful and social way. In our music therapy groups, we already have this pre-existing, really motivating social environment that's existing, so it makes a lot of sense for them to come in and bring in all of their socialization goals, all of their initiation goals, um, all of their augmentative communication goals into our music therapy sessions. How are music therapy programs funded? Through um, hospital programs where there are salaries, where music therapists are hired. There's a lot of grant programs where grants are written and music therapy is brought in as part of a grant program. Also in terms of insurance, we're beginning to see music therapy being reimbursed by third party payment where a uh, doctor will write a referral and for music therapy for a patient and then uh, music therapy provides that service through managed care and music therapists are then paid through third party payment. What is the difference between performing and doing music therapy? One of the main differences between being a performer and being a music therapist is that as a performer, when I am making music, when I am sharing music, it's about me and it's about my relationship to that music and it's, you know, I'm choosing the music that I want to sing or play. Being a music therapist, the music that I use and the reason why I'm using that music is because of this participant. So everything is about them. It is not about me. Everything I do is tailored to that person's life needs, that person's music preferences. As a performer, the music is about me. As a music therapist, the music is about the participant, and it's about how I am serving their life goals and development with music. Music therapists look to actively engage their clients, their participants, or patients uh, in music making, in active music making. With performance, performers are generally just playing for people. Maybe uh, they can even have a goal of relaxing their audience or exciting their audience or um, touching an emotional base, but music therapists use music in an active way to achieve, to achieve goals. Neurologically speaking, why is music therapy effective? That's been the question for my last 35 years of practice. Why is it that you can have a profoundly handicapped person who can't walk or talk, feed themselves or dress themselves, be so musical? Why is that, why is that maintained um, in neural function? And so what we know is that music is diffusely activated throughout the brain, and it's that diffuse activation that disallows any disease process to rob it of its entirely, like uh, language is much more vulnerable. You have a stroke and your language or speech are very disturbed, very easily. But with music, there are so many centers throughout the brain that have been um, online since before somebody was born and appear to be online until the moment of death that make it a very robust skill set and that we can access it even despite pathologies that are congenital or acquired. Where does music therapy stand in healthcare today? Healthcare is changing today and you're seeing music therapy being at the forefront of services in terms of wellness and prevention, the mind-body connection, psychoneuroimmunology. People are really looking for alternative complementary forms of healthcare that work and music therapy is effective and it's efficient.